everyone, Sheila here with my weekly update. So this week I want to tell you a story, or in fact several stories, but I really want to share the story of how some work develops, um, where I get inspiration from, and sometimes that involves some other stories as well. So let me start with um, this piece, which um, is a small canvas, um, deep canvas 30 by 30, um, which is one of my mixed media collages. So this is me, this consists of um, mono prints um, where I've created different textures and patterns on different types of paper. And then I rip them up and collage them and, and create these kind of landscapes. Now I call this one the Green Witch because to me it reminds me of the sea. And um, when I was making it, quite often when I'm making things, particularly with collages, I'm never quite sure where I'm going with them when I start. But as I was making this, um, it reminded me of a story that I read, a book that I read actually, um, when I was quite young called The Green Witch by Susan Cooper, who you might have heard of. And it's part of the Dark is Rising series, which is quite a famous children's um, book. Um, now, The Green Witch, um, as well as being a story in itself, um, draws on lots of other um, stories, particularly Arthurian legends um, and also some Cornish myth and legends as well, because it's set in Cornwall. And there's a part of the book where um, the local women in the village uh, where the children who are in the book are staying, that they make this, I suppose, this wicker statue of, of the Green Witch, which is um, then rolled off the cliff into the sea as um, a gift to the sea to help the, you know, bring the fishermen good luck. So there's lots of stories in there. And it's one of those books that stayed with me for, for a long time. Anyway, I felt that this just reminded me of, of that story. Um, now, earlier this year, when I was doing some of my experiments with photo transfer to create prints, I went back to that image because I thought, well, I wonder what that would look if I did some photo transfer with it. And I don't know if you can see behind me, that's one that, that's framed. It's not very good. Um, it's a bit um, far away, but if I bring it any closer, you'll get a reflection from the <laughs> selfie light that I have uh, to hide my wrinkles. Um, but anyway, it's a bit more like this. Now, when I did this on the paper, um, I was able to sort of bring out a bit more detail and I'll show you maybe on this one you can sort of see it again there the detail so bringing it out in different ways and as I was doing this it suddenly seemed to me that I could see what I call selkies or, or mermaids which of course is another I suppose well I suppose it is another story there's lots of stories of selkies or mermaids in Scotland so they were the mermaids um and that they used to take off their um their, their skins their seal skins well seals mermaids and they would become women at night and the fishermen used to catch them and they would hide their their um their skins in a box and there's quite a lot of stories about you know these women or selkies that were trapped by fishermen, you know, they'd have children for years, but uh, and be kept for years, and then sometimes they would find their skin and be able to escape back to the sea. But obviously, all with a bit of longing if they had any children uh, left with them. But this reminded me of that. So as I saw these things, so I call that song of the selkies. So um, yeah, this is on these nice this nice caddy paper. I have a few of these left. I've got three, only three of them left. So if you're interested, let me know. But I just wanted to share um, a bit more about the stories behind some of the work and how in my head when I'm making things, I'm always creating, I suppose, a narrative or a story around a piece of work as well. So I hope you enjoyed that and um, I hope you're all keeping well and I'll catch up with you again very, very soon. Bye for now.